Hello, what is happening? Welcome back. Today we are going to be analyzing more and more real estate. Again, this is all about how you can get started investing in real estate using FHA loans with as little as three and a half percent down payment. If you don't know who I am, my name is Maxim Cruz. I'm actually a real estate broker as well as an investor. And back in 2011, my wife and I, we uh, were crazy enough to delay our wedding and use some of our savings to buy a four unit property uh, using an FHA loan. We were able to live rent free, pay off some debt much, much quicker and have continued investing in real estate to a point where we own uh, at this point right now, multiple 12 unit buildings, uh, 12 units in total through multiple buildings. So real estate has definitely been a blessing and we continue uh, looking for bigger deals and scaling up our business. But this is all about you. This is about how you can do it. If you haven't watched the other videos where I go through some basic terminology and just a different way of how you can look at you know, living at the property that you own and getting some cash flow from it at the same time, you know, go and check that out. Kingdom citizens, welcome back. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and check out Velocity Banking uh, through Denzel Rodriguez's channel, Mr. Finance Geek. Uh, again, Velocity Banking allows you to pay off debt much, much quicker without necessarily making any more money. It's just a different way of leveraging, uh, you know, the different type of uh, systems that we have like credit cards, equity lines, etc. and using it to your advantage. All right, so let's get right into it. Today, we continue to look at property in Pompano Beach. Do I have a doozy for you today? We are going to be using, uh, we are going to be looking at a four unit building. This is very similar to the scenario that my wife and I, that we got into. So I could definitely relate and I'll share with you some of the mistakes that we made uh, when we, you know, were doing this whole thing and how you can avoid them throughout the process. So for disclosure purposes, I am a licensed real estate broker. The information that I'm going to be giving you here is not investment advice. I definitely encourage you to check with your, uh, you know, certified investment professionals who can give you better investment advice. This is for information purposes only. And again, as an active real estate broker and as an active investor myself, this is how I would look at a deal personally. And again, uh, this is for information purposes only. And you know, the more you learn, the more you earn. So this is the intent of doing that. Also remember, we do have uh, the free spreadsheet. So if you want to analyze deals on a spreadsheet, there is a link in the description. It's actually um, a Google Forms spreadsheet. So you could go and do it online or you could download it using an Excel, use it on your phone, wherever you want. Um, so there are some basic standard things there and you can add more things, you know, Nate nurture to you. If you're a seasoned investor, if you're a syndicator, you know, this information might be basic, but it's also good because, you know, you could actually see what we're looking at here. And again, in some scenarios, you can add more uh, expenses or add the increased rents, whatever. Again, we're looking at it uh, just as the way that I would look for it. Uh, so again, this is not investment advice. So let's get right into it. What property are we looking today? We are looking at a four unit building located at 330. I'm going to try to stay in the frame because I know this is a little bit small. So hopefully you could see it. But if I'm out of frame, just uh, hopefully you can continue listening to me. 330, 360 Northeast 7th Street, Pompano Beach, Florida, MLS number A1070844. This property was listed back on December 17, 2019. Uh, for $570,000. Uh, again, it is a four unit building. Let me read the description to you. Income producing fourplex in the heart of Pompano Beach. This multifamily property consists of two buildings with two units in each. New roof installed in 2007, so a couple years old. Tenants pay their own electricity and uh, landlord pays for water and landscaping. Multiple parking spaces available for tenants, large yard, additional storage, walking distance from Pompano Beach uh, Middle School, very close to Kester Park, Pompano Beach High School, and Pompano Community Park, only 10 minutes away from Pompano Beach. 
So uh, this unit right now is fully occupied, okay? Uh, so as we look at here, uh, we are going to observe uh, some of the numbers. Oh, I'm sorry. It says one unit is actually vacant. Uh, so it's good because this will allow us to do some numbers. So this realtor here, um, he was uh, kind enough in order to do some numbers and kind of give us some rent rolls. Uh, there is one figure here that I disagree with. And once we get in the cost, I'll show you exactly what these are. So let's go ahead and look at the numbers and see how they look the other thing that is very very important here is i actually as a licensed realtor we have access uh to the property information card right this is actually public information for us it's fairly simple to get uh for you you might have to go to your local tax assessor go on their computer etc etc we just click on one button on the property and it brings us here uh, so the reason that you want to do this is you want to verify that it's actually uh, a legal four unit. Sometimes you'll have two separate buildings that might have multiple units, but it says, for example, three units they're using as four. So again, you want to make sure that your tax record also shows that it is a four unit building, which this does. It shows two, two buildings with two units each. It shows the relative square footage. So all that stuff checks out. The other important thing here is actually the public records show that this property was bought in 2015 by the present owner, Franca Roma LLC for $166,000 three hundred dollars and knowing that information to you as the buyer and your buyer's agent can be a great negotiating tool the other thing i do want to mention is the fha mortgage limits again you can go on the hud website for pompano beach a four family is seven hundred eighteen thousand seven hundred and fifty is the maximum this property is listed for 570 so yes it qualifies for fha and there's gotta be one more thing that I talk about in the financing for FHA, so you definitely wanna stay tuned for that, okay? So let's get right into it, the rent roll. Right now, out of the four units, it's saying 1150 for the two bedroom, two bathroom. For the second unit, which is a one bedroom, one bathroom, $1,000 a month. For the larger unit, three bedroom, two bathrooms, $1,300 a month and unit four, one bedroom, one bathroom, $1,050 per month. Uh, some of the leases expire May 31st, 2020, so you still got five months on it left. Today is January 8th. Uh, another one expires March 31st, 2021, so you still have, you know, 15 months. That might have been a, uh, an 18-month lease or something like that. And then another one expired last year, so they're probably month-to-month -month right now. Uh, on November 30th, 2019, and one of them is vacant, but here we're gonna look at it as fully occupied. So, forget about all this stuff, we're gonna get into that stuff, so I'm kinda hiding it with my body here. Let's look at the numbers as is, as it was given to us. Based on the information on that rent roll, the total income is $54,000 in a cash investment. Remember, the reason that I lay out these three categories is because I want for you to start getting the investor cap on and thinking like investors do, right? So we look at it as a cash investment. We look at it as a leveraged investment, which would be a conventional loan, 20% down payment. And then we look at it as owner occupied, which means you're gonna be occupying one of the units, so you're gonna be living in the property, but your down payment is only gonna be three and a half percent. So we look at all these different scenarios. So for both of these, because we're assuming that the building is rented out the whole entire time, your income is $54,000 for the entire year. On the owner occupied, I am saying that the two bedroom, two bathroom unit is gonna be occupied by the owner. So I'm not uh, factoring that 1,150 income on there. So that total income for owner occupied is $40,200. So based on the information here, I did find another discrepancy. Uh, the public records show that the taxes on this property is 6,455. Uh, the real estate broker here says that the taxes are $7,259.23. So that's the figure I went by. 
because if they're telling us that that's the number, that's the negotiating tool that we want to use, if we actually do confirm that it is a lower number, then you can use that to your advantage, but you might not want to say, hey, this number is completely wrong, so that actually gives the seller uh, more leverage because he can ask more money for the property because his NOI, net operating income, will be higher. So that will have to be verified. So that number stays the same all across the board. Uh, next is the insurance. This right here, he states that the insurance is estimated, EST, at $2,500 a month. I disagree with that number from my personal experience. Usually about $1,000 per unit on an owner-occupied home is pretty average. So because this has four units, I'm saying that number is probably closer to $4,000. But again, in this scenario, what you can actually do is call or go online and just do a, a sample search or get a quote on what it's actually going to cost for this unit. And that way you can get an actual real estimated number based on a quote on what it's going to cost. But instead of using the $2,500 figure, I use the $4,000 figure all across the board. Water and sewer, uh, that number again, it's showing here as 2,040. That's the same. In this unit, because it's a four unit building, I'm saying, okay, as the owner, you're still gonna be doing the landscaping. And then the another figure that I added in here was repairs. Because you have more units to maintain and you, know, you might be working or whatever, it is a little bit more difficult. So I wanna make sure I put in some number for the repairs. Uh, $1,200, it's you know, $100 per month. Some months you might have some repairs, other months you might not have any repairs. So again, that number might vary, but at least it's a good placeholder. So what does that uh, end us with? In our cash investment, the total expenses is 15939 Actually, all of the expenses are exactly the same here because again, as the owner occupied, I am saying, okay, go ahead and hire a landscaper, go ahead and subcontract out the repairs. If you wanted to take care of these numbers, then obviously your uh, uh, expenses are gonna be a little bit lower, but you have to factor that in if you want to cut your own grass and fix your own leaky toilets or whatever the scenario might be. But I went ahead and added that in there. Obviously for the cash investment, there is no financing that is zero. Leveraged investment, right here we have 20% down payment, which means on $570,000, your 20% down payment is $114,000, which means your principal and interest payment is $2,177.01. And uh, over the year, the total financing is $26,124.16. Now, I am gonna talk about the reserves next. Let me just point out what the financing is for the FHA mortgage. So on the FHA mortgage, remember, you are only putting 3.5% down payment. So that number is $19,950,000 down payment. And that means you also have a PMI, your private mortgage insurance. So that total payment is $3,084 times 12 months, gives us an annual debt service of $37,012.77. Okay. Now, on this building, because it is a four unit building, typically the banks, this is depending on the credit score and this is depending on the income of the property, but typically in most scenarios, the banks are going to ask you to have some reserves. What that means for you as a buyer is the bank just wants to make sure that you, after you put in your down payment, that you still have some liquidity, some cash in the bank. So in case anything goes wrong with these tenants, at least they're covered for a few months. Typically in a 20% down payment, depending on your history, depending on your credit, they might ask you anywhere from zero to three months. So that means if they ask you for three months of reserves, on your principal and interest, that will mean you need to have about $6,531.03 of the bank. For FHA, it is more money, okay? They might ask you three up to six months in return. It might even be more depending on the bank that you're working with. So definitely make sure you check on these numbers with your loan originator. So that can be anywhere from 9,200 up to 18,000 thousand five hundred dollars in reserves 
Now that money you're not factoring into expenses because that money is just pretty much sitting in a bank account just in case anything goes wrong. It's always good to have reserves. Uh, so again, that's a, just a placeholder to give the bank security that in case anything goes wrong, you have the ability to make payments on the principal and interest on the mortgage for this property, okay? So the net operating income, remember, it's the difference between our income and our expenses. So on the pure cash investment without any financing, our NOI is $38,060.77. Let's go right in into cap rate. That means that this purchase price at $570,000, our cap rate is 6.68%. Again, right now, the multifamily market in Florida, the average, again, typically this is done in commercial deals, units where you have five plus properties. So on average right now, the Florida market is between five and 6%. So, you know, for a seasoned investor, they would say, hey, this is a very, very good return based on the average market. But again, uh, you know, a bigger investor might say this is too small of a deal because four units, they might not want to deal with that. And again, I don't have management numbers here. I don't have a property manager. I don't have a, an administrative number. So again, that offsets the NOI. So a bigger investor are probably not, even though the cap rate as well, they're probably not going to want to invest in this type of deal, right? So for maybe the medium sized investor where they're using some leverage, let's look at the cash on cash. Here we see that the NOI is $11,936.61. Remember the down payment that we are putting in as a um, leveraged investor is $114,000. So that puts us at a cash on cash return of 10.47%. So pretty much what that means is we invest $114,000 into this property and every year we get back $11,936 of cash. And again, this isn't counting depreciation and other things which are tax incentives, which is a whole other video that I'll make uh, here in the future. For the owner occupied, again, we are still negative, which means money has to come out of pocket. Now the monthly payment out of pocket for the owner is $1,062.67. This still isn't that bad because remember the unit that they're actually living in is a two bedroom, two bathroom and the average market rent in this area right now is about $1,200. So they still saving $138 per month versus if they were renting out. Obviously they have the responsibility of managing the unit and doing some maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. So again, uh, for all of you kingdom citizens that know about cash flow, at least it's some cash flow that they are claiming from this stuff. And again, they're building equity. They have an asset. They can do cash out refinance in the future, invest it into real estate, a whole bunch of other things. Okay. Now let's get into our analysis. Okay. And this is where I might come off camera. Uh, and oh, actually I could stand right here and uh, still be in the frame. So Let's say just in case, uh, because we know that this property owner bought this building back in 2015 for $166,000, uh, you know, they definitely have some equity trying to get that 570, you know, I'm not sure if they improved the property, but at least, you know, that's close to $400,000 in equity over what they bought it for. So maybe there might be some room for negotiation. So let's just go ahead and put in an offer for 500,000 and see what the numbers look like. Here, what I actually did is on unit one, I upped the numbers instead of the 1150, I said it's gonna be 1200 per month. On unit two, it's 1100 instead of the 1000. On unit three, a three bedroom, two bathroom right now in that area is right around 1450, 1500. So I stayed a little bit conservative, 1400. And on unit four, I did the same as the one bed, one bath to 1100. So that increases our NOI on a cash investment to $41,660 and 77 cents versus the original of 38,000. So you could see right there, that's an extra almost $3,000 in collected rent uh, based on these market rents, which brings our cap rate to 8.33%. 
The leveraged NOI when we're putting 20, uh, a 20% down payment is $18,744, which is about $7,000 more than the previous example. And you can see our cash on cash here is 18.74%. So that is a great, great return because typically syndicators, anytime that you can get a 15% or higher cash on cash return, the syndicators will start to look at these deals. Again, being a four unit building, it's a little bit too small, but at least you could start to get to see what terminology I'm using and that way you can put your investors cap on and hopefully use this knowledge in the future as you uh, become a, you know, an experienced real estate investor. So for the owner, let's see how it looks here. Now the NOI, you're still negative $2,794 for the year, which means the out-of-pocket expense is $232.84, which means if they were renting at $1,200 a month and now they're only paying $232.84 out-of-pocket, that means that they have a cash flow every single month of $967.00. Uh, and 16 cents. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, make sure you go and check out Denzel's channel where he talks about velocity banking. And it's just a different way of how you look at your personal finances, where you look at the difference between your income and expenses and the money you have left over every month is cash flow that you are using to pay off any debt that you have. And again, in this scenario, the down payment for an FHA loan is 17,500. Now, don't forget, you might still have some reserves, so you might need a little bit more money uh, in your bank to buy this deal. But uh, a tip or a trick that you can use in this is that you can actually get a gift from a relative. So let's say your relative gives you a gift of $20,000. Uh, you can you know, have that gift in your bank and make sure you get the right documentation, documenting that you did get that gift and you have that money in the bank. So, you know, there's ways that you could show that you have that money in the bank for your reserves and your down payment. Now, I know in this deal, you know, $70,000 might be a little bit widespread. So I said, okay, well, maybe the owner comes back because they bought it for 166 and they have so much equity. Let's say we meet somewhere in the middle for 530,000. I kept my rents here a little bit higher. So here the cap rate is 7.86%. As you see, my uh, NOI, my net operating income is exactly the same because my rental income is the same and I'm using the previous expenses. My leveraged NOI in this scenario is a little bit less. You could still see that my cash on cash return is still above 15%, which is what the syndicators look for. So it's 16.39% and my down payment out of pocket for the 20% down payment is 106,000. For the owner occupied, we are still negative 4,597, which means that out of pocket every single month, this owner occupied is $383.11. But remember the thing that we are focusing on here as FHA investors using these type of loans, occupying these properties, is the cash flow on a monthly basis. If the owner that's purchasing the property, the buyer that's buying this, if they are renting a two bedroom, two bathroom right now for $1,200 a month, and we put them in a scenario where their out of pocket expenses are only $383 a month, we are creating a cash flow of $816.89 every single month. And again, your down payment is $18,550. So uh, as we continue with these series, I have seen a couple of comments. I have seen a couple of people reach out. Make sure you go and download the form uh, for the analyzer. So it's a Google Sheets. You could do it yourself. And I have the link to Denzel's channel down there below. Uh, and reach out to me. Let me know what additional questions I can help answer. Let me know if this is helping you. If you have a deal 
Um, again, I do have about seven other deals that I am analyzing that people have sent me. So if you have a deal that you would like for me to put up on the board, make sure to contact me, send me a message, uh, and we'll go ahead and analyze your deal and uh, just show you what the numbers will look like. And then maybe that can help reinforce whatever decision you want to make regarding your purchase. So hopefully you're enjoying this content. I'm excited about cash flow. You know, this is very, very similar to what my wife and I did and how we were able to, uh, you know, get started in real estate for, uh, you know, not that much money. I know this is a four unit building. So again, uh, just think of it long term. If you can continue doing this over time, look at this. This owner bought this building in 2015 for $166,000. Where uh, this is January 8, 2020. So, in a matter of four or five years, they've created $400,000 of equity. So, when they sell, even if they only made $200,000 in equity, they continue to get monthly cash flow every single month while they own this property so that is the way that you should start thinking about these deals and about how to just observe real estate on a different level so thanks for tuning in here again send me your deals we'll put them up on the board uh you don't have to send me the the address you don't have to send me the numbers uh the mls number you could just send me uh you know the list price you could send me the expenses and you could send me the uh, rental for what it's going for or what the market rent will be and we'll analyze it in this situation uh, again we do have a referral system all across the United States so if you are anywhere in the United States doesn't matter that you're not here in Miami Florida uh, we could definitely connect you with a appropriate real estate agent that can help you uh, find these type of deals and then by watching this information you could tell them why you're looking to offer certain amounts and why these numbers make sense for you so again we could definitely refer you anywhere that you are in the united states just make sure to reach out to me and we'll be more than happy to provide you with a referral agent in your area with that, uh, have a great day. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying this content. And again, we never ask for you to subscribe. Uh, all we ask for you to do is enjoy this content. So with that, have an awesome day and I'll see you on the next video.